Good morning, sir. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay, let's start. Let me recall that what I did for metric spaces and that. First of all, you have the metric space XT. We know that that we have conditions. So D is a function actually from X cross X to non-negative reals. Okay. Since I'm writing this so that it means actually DXY is always greater than or equal to zero or plus non-negative reals. OK, and here you are getting first condition. I'm just recalling DXY equal to zero if and only X equal to Y. One, two, the symmetric distance DXY equal to DYX. OK. And third one, that is most important, that triangle inequality. Okay. Now, after this, I'm giving some examples of metric spaces. I talked about open ball and closed ball. So if you have X belongs to X, we are starting with the metric spaces, and R is a positive number, strictly greater than zero. So VXR, we have defined those points y in x such that dxy less than r. It doesn't matter because of dxy is same as dyx and cxr closed wall y belongs to x such that dxy less than equal to R. Now look here, I'm in between two pages, I am not writing now, right now I am not teaching, I am going to page 62 of the notes. Okay, look here, 
this thing is important. Why? Look, here I have this matrix space. Also Q, set of rationals. This is also matrix space. Look, here distance on Q, and this, this thing, this is nothing but the metric, usual metric on R restricted to Q. It is a metric, but look, you should, have, you should be careful about this. It's actually the same, though the same metric, but it is restricted to Q. So, what will be a ball like in Q? Suppose if I take this and you will take a rationals, then BQR will be all this. P belongs to Q, Q. Like P minus Q is distance less than R. Got it. Look here, P belongs to Q. So this is not because when you write in this interval form, it means that it contains all the points in the real line. Okay. So here the irrationals are not here. This is not there. On the other hand, if you take this, so you keep this notation that is the ball in Q. Whereas if you take ball in this, then this will be this. Okay, so be careful about that. Where, what is your metric space? It makes a lot of difference. It makes a lot of difference. So that here it is not equal because here all, all the rational points and here you have the entire actual interval, open interval. So, but you can see that this one, this one, this is indicate the ball in R, this is indicate the ball in Q. This is actually QR, this ball, this one, intersection with Q. Okay. Right, so that you can easily see that. Suppose I have a metric space X T and one Y. This is usually once you understand, this is not required. This is the same metric. This is the metric D of X restricted to. Sometimes you write this to indicate, but if you have no confusion, you can also simply write YD. Now look, the word I have discussed, you can easily see that P, Y, suppose Y is a point here, has to be, and R greater than zero, this is Y, R, this is the open ball centered at Y with radius R, in Y, big Y, and this is, will be what? P, X, X, R, look here, I'm taking the ball in X, sorry, Y. Y, the intersection with Y. Okay, so be careful, this actually, what I talked about giving the example of rational, the proof of this. That means it is very simple. The ball in Y will be ball in X, but restricted to Y because now your space is constrained, constrained to Y. You have only Y. Like, look, here you have this. X equal to R. 
the metric is this and why is suppose I am having this. Take this thing, interval 0 to. Now look, example, here at the point 0, 0 is here. So look, P, Y, 0, half. Is the open interval, basically will be at the point, uh, centered at 0, 0 is here. Okay, with radius half. That means it will, by definition, it will mean what? Y belongs to Y. Y is this. This less than half. Which means Y belongs to Y such that mod Y less than half. Now look, here less than half means mod Y. But points below, look, this is zero. They are not in Y. So this will mean what? Zero to one by two. Open. Right? Cut it. On the other hand, look, if I take this, then as usual, this is the interval around centered at zero, that means it will be? Minus of two half. Look here, yes, you are getting part of this, but this you can write. Why is that? This. Okay. So that we'll have to be careful that what is your state, not only metric, then that means when you have a metric space, make sure that you are dealing with two things x as well as d it is not only d or x okay so the ball you'll have to be careful if you are not careful about ball you'll get wrong regions okay because now so this is the thing i talked about in page 62 okay page 62 now i'm coming back to 60 that definition of interior point page 60 definition of an interior point Look in page 60, the top definition, just look at that. I said there exists R greater than 0 in the bracket error. This R depends on big A. That's a mistake. It's a small A. Okay. So that you're starting small A. You are starting with a metric space XT and you are having a set this subset of X. It may be empty. It doesn't matter. Hmm. If it is empty, then Definition will be satisfied backwardsly. Now, suppose you take a point A belongs to A. Okay. Right. Now, I am defining A is called an interior point. That is, it is really an interior. An interior point. Of A. If there exists R greater than zero, means there exists a ball centered at A. If this means for some, actually you can take if there exists an open ball. P a R everything now I'm not going to the any subset of that. The only one matrix space I'm considering XD. So I am not I don't need to write this notation X and that. Okay, B A R is contained in A. Look, A is always here. I am taking this. So there exists R greater than zero means this thing that you have an open ball. And this will depend, this R will depend on A. That means you may need to choose small, very small R, depending on A. The big R may not work. Okay. In fact, if one R works, then any smaller R work also will work. That means if you have this and if you have this. So this is also 
true because so actually if there exists there will exist infinitely many things in life okay but again i told you last time these these may not be usually may not be distinct also, like discrete matrix case so that the point that means the point is like if you suppose if you, this is your x and suppose this is your a then when you are taking a point a here so you have a ball entirely contained in this on the other hand if you look this suppose this you have these points also okay now if you take this this point in a but if you draw a ball the part of the ball is going inside x minus a so this point is not a boundary point because so it doesn't matter what is a small r still it will be part of that ball will be in x minus a but whereas i have the entire ball inside this here also look that it depends on this thing the how small radius you are choosing because if you choose big radius it will it may contain the points of x minus a also complement x minus a is the complement of a so that that's why there exist r greater than g so this is this is really like integer you say you may say why it is called integer that i will explain later on oh it is though it's a point in a actually it is sort of in the boundary between x minus a and a a and a it's complement x minus is com so it is not actually lying really interior uh, inside a it is on the boundary of this actually such points are called boundary points so that's why you have to be careful that it is interior points i am to find interior points okay idea is very simple okay like now i have given example look example 1 so i have for example this should, should always start with the simplest one this r is the usual distance matrix now look if you have take this the quad will be look here each point except a that means if you take this each point of this open interval will be an interior point of a but not zero because zero whatever radius you choose part of this will be this will be outside a in fact what i am saying zero is a boundary point of that okay so so this is zero is not an interior point that means if you now look okay so that here zero is not an interior point of of a okay but other points are interior point of a now look in t the notation this is the set of all interior points of a set of all interior points some people reuse this notation okay here you need to remember less the moment you see int the word so it is interior here you have to remember that what does it mean okay so i prefer this thing int a. now look the set of all interior points of a that means int of this of course it is very clear you need to write in this matrix space hmm actually in 10 x3 yeah here is equal to 0 2 okay right now look also by definition interior point and interior point is a point of a itself so that in t is a subset of a because each interior point look i have written a point a small point a in big a is called an interior point of a so i by, by definition 
interior point, each interior point is the point of view. So this you have this. OK, right. Now the question is I have already seen that it may be a proper C. Proper subset of T. The question is. What happens? That is the point actually. What happens? If. That is each point is an interior point. That is the one question. That is one. Second question that the interior of P, if it is not. Now look how many questions you can ask. So that you have a matrix space X T in N is a subset of X. So we have got interior of A, which is a subset of A. Okay. Now the thing is that in if case one, this is the whole thing. That will be an interesting case to do. Case two, not equal to that means it's a proper subset. But now look, case two, this though I will deal, but for this one, look, it may be very bad or also good in a sense, it may be large set, and at the same time, it may be in the empty set also, it is very small set. Let me give you an example. Look, what will be interior of Q, Q set of rationals in this? Hmm? Empty. Five. Empty. Five. 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 Right. OK, this is five because any interval will contain both rationals and irrational. So you don't have it. This is five. OK, on the other hand, you have got int. This. So it is not the whole thing. You got look this except one point. Everybody is an interior point. So definitely regarding interior, this is better than this. OK, so that ultimately what we are going to see that if this happens, then it's very good. If this doesn't happen for case two, then you'll have to say that how good or bad is the interior. In fact, if interior is large, then we consider it to be a good set. Whereas interior is small, particularly empty, we consider it is a bad set. Okay. Now let me keep one more example, the discrete set, look here. To take D discrete. OK, now look here. P X R equal to, I have given that. If R less than equal to 1, it is itself less than X. This. That means what happens if you take a subset of X, if I take X belongs to X, then obviously this will be the B X half particularly. Will be contained in a. So much yes. That yes. means each point will be an interior point. Yes. That in that case, this will happen. For any set. So much gap. OK, each point. So that for each subset A of X, this will happen. Interior of A equal to A. Nothing else will happen. OK, so this is the example to you should just think. OK, now I put a start on that. Here are two sets. If you have X T metric space, then you take A equal to X, and another set you take A equal to 5. Look. A equal to X, you'll have to say that it's some ball here to take X belongs to A. That means X belongs to A equal to X. You'll have to show that. But look, everything I'm working inside X, so it is automatically satisfied because BXR by definition is a subset of X. So this is automatically satisfied. It doesn't matter what is your R. So automatically satisfied here means actually trivially satisfied. 
trivially satisfied. Whereas here you see that we have nothing to prove, so it is vacuously proved. Vacuous. That is nothing to prove, vacuously proved. That means here you are getting this thing interior of x is x and interior of phi is phi. This proof is vacuously. Because you are not being able to give me any point. What I'll check? I have nothing to check. Okay, here I have nothing to check. And here I have something to check. Though the proof is trivial. Okay, this is always true. So that two sets, you always know that. That I have written. Interior of x is x. Interior. But be careful. Here I said. You have this now. Look. Here interior of x and here you have this. Look, if I take interior of Q in R, that you have got empty set, right? But what happens here? In Q, look, here interior of X, when I'm writing X, this is interior of X in X, right? So interior of Q in Q will be Q. Q, Q itself. And here it is phi. So it is very important where you are considering your interior. Sometimes to make a distinction clear, we write interior of x like this. Or inyal interior of a inyal in x. That means I'm taking interior of a in x, where x is a matrix space, a is a subset of x. Suppose you have a is a subset of y, y is a subset of x then you will have two interior. And that already I told you that they may not be same. So when you are considering interior, so be careful about that. Interior, when I'm writing that, it is first you should inquire where. That means you should be very careful your metric space. So much guy, this is very important. <clears throat> yes. Now, look here, the case I'm telling you that int okay, so interior of A equal to this. So, here, basically definition 3, page 61. <coughs> XT is a metric space. A is a subset of X. Now, the case, suppose you have this. To have this, then A is called if open set is called open. Okay. In be careful, open in X3 actually you should say. When you say just open, you should have in your mind where it is. So in the beginning, you should write that basically. It is called open in X3. Now look interior of A when I'm writing this. This is always true by definition. So it actually means I am having this. Okay, that means I am claiming that here, if each point of A is an interior point, if that definition means actually, if each point of A is an interior point. Of A. Of course, everything next then A is called. Open in X3. This actually this is important. This is auto always satisfied so this. OK. Now look here, before giving the results on that, hmm, that I said remark, but often you say that, okay, that explained that thing, to keep in mind on that, okay. Now here, look, here, when you have this thing, okay, so this is, look at this, this set, 
is not open here. Is not open. Because zero is not an interior point here. But you see. Okay. Or the, hmm? on the other hand, you can I can take a better example. This zero this two this hmm? is open in zero comma two itself. Got it. Okay. Open. Is open in here. That's ah, yes, sir. Open. Okay. Right. Because only the point zero, but the part of the zero that is the right side. That is here. Okay. Right. Okay. Of course. So, yeah, yeah, open. Yeah, be open. Hai na, the whole set. The whole set is always open. Okay. Right, so, but yes, this is got this. Okay, yes. so that you'll have to be careful where you are dealing with this. Okay, right. But here you think about it that I am example. I am taking counter example. I am taking one part at least one point on one side is closed. But what happens? Suppose if you ha have this R and suppose. Set B, an open interval like this. Take that. Okay, got it. And take a subset of B. Is it true? The look. Is it true? I'm asking this question. A is open. In this, if and only if is open in this. This is the question. Think about it. <clears throat> hmm? But I have given this be an open interval, not close interval. Look at the examples I am giving. I was not picking up open interval. OK, at least one side I was closing. But suppose you take an open interval, then what will be the answer? I'm saying whether this will be true. A is open in this, depend on leaf, open in, sorry. Ah, trigger, P here. <coughs> this is, a, <coughs> in fact, Later on, we'll see that it will be in the end. So think about this. OK. Think about this. Okay. Right. Now. I'm going to define. Oh, I have not. Uh, I already defined open set. Open set means look here. I'm saying. When A is open means interior of A. In B is equal to A. So much gap. That is the meaning. A is open. Okay. Hmm. A is called open interior of A is the whole thing, but it is interior of B. Here it is. That is the thing you'll have to answer whether this is true. Uh, so we can take. A equals to B, then B equals to Q. So interior of Q in Are I by Q given Q. B interval, open interval? Oh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, true. I am not interested in Q here. Already I have given even for better than Q on like this. It was not true. Right? Okay. Yes, so here I am given open interval. So think about it. That means you'll have to prove this. Whether this is true. Okay. Hmm? Cut this. Look here, that look here, it should be true because reason is what I was doing here. What was the problem? The half part, left part was not there. But here I can choose sufficiently small thing. Okay. 
like if you have this thing. It won't happen with this case. समझ गया? It doesn't matter. Whatever point close to zero you choose, I can always choose something very small radius, entirely continuous. Okay. It won't happen like this. Okay. So that for open interval, you can see for this, you just look, contrast the behavior of this interval to with this. The word you got here that you won't get here. The same thing, if you can prove it here, that will be entirely true here. Okay. In fact, answer will be yes. Okay. So that you can think of that of this thing. Okay. Now the thing is. Why you are interested in open cells? These open cells, okay. Basically, it is the starting point of the metric space. Okay. Look, any subject, particularly in mathematics, they start somewhere. Okay, before that you have something requirements, prerequisites. Uh, so matrix, but that they don't start there actually. The matrix space actually starts with open sets. Okay, so that suppose I'm taking x t again. This is the A is called open in x t. If you know what is there, your x t, then you don't need to write all the time. You can say a is open. If and only if interior of a is a. That means each point of a is an interior point of a. Okay. Now look and like tau. This is the Greek alphabet tau. Like say, let take let us take the set of all. The family of all open sets in X. But you are collecting. Look, this family is non-empty because by definition X and Phi they are open. That I already say that Good. interior of X. Actually, x and interior of phi is phi. Okay, so that these are open. Okay, so that that means x and phi they belongs to tau. Okay, now the thing is, what I'm proving through m six point five. Okay, first thing. Okay, how big is the family? That is the question. Now the question about tau. I am going to the Familiar all open sets. Okay, look. The how big is the how is the what is the size of tau? Well, first of all, that may be your intuition. This tau, because I, ultimately I want to study x t metric space. What will prefer? But somebody will prefer that tau should not be too big or too small. Okay, right? Because if it is too big, that means you will have to. While considering the openness, you will have to study a lot of sets. Whereas too small, you don't have much sets. That means it don't reflect the metric D on tau because you have too small sets. Now look at the example. First of all, if you take D discrete metric. On X, I have already seen that here. For each a subset of X, int a is a. That means each subset of a is open in X D. That means a is open in X D. That means any subset of X is open here. And you, of course, you can't have anything bigger, right? You have taken all subsets of x. That means tau is coming here. What? The power set of x 
And nothing can be bigger than this. So here you have got the largest family possible. Tau equal to Px. Okay. So let us see what while dealing with this, this size is not good actually because everything is there. Okay. Yet let me tell you that that something about the philosophy of man. When you prove a result, what, what result you will do that? Prefer? If it is always true, then it is not a result. Because if it is always true, you don't need to put any condition, anything fine. So that is not a good result. At the same time, if you have something which never happens, that is also not good. Because it never happens. Then what do you do with that? If that means result, if it always happens, and never happens, Okay. Both the cases are extreme. They are not good things. Okay. Right. Never happens. Now the thing is, so that that sense the extreme metric space, you are getting the discrete metric. Here you getting tau equal to whole thing. Okay. Is it possible that now Look, already I know tau has this at least this many, uh, x and phi. Is it possible tau is this? Only this. Well, if you take only single point, mm -hmm. then this is obviously possible. Metric will be a little bit trivial because you have only one point. That means dxx is zero, zero metric. <coughs> Then obviously possible. The, the, suppose x contains more than one point. X t is a metric space, and x contains more than one point. Look, this is the smallest possible thing because x and phi they are always open by definition. So that if you have this any tau, tau will have to contain this. I am saying whether tau will be only this much contain more than one point. Is it possible? Think about it. Is it possible to have that is only open sets are X and empty set. Is it possible? Think about it. Okay. Right. Before that, look at theorem, this thing. Okay. 6.5. So think about this. It is it possible to have this? Okay. Look, this is the smallest collection of open sets possible because all these two will be always there. And the largest I have got, the smallest one. Okay. Before answering this question, look at theorem 6.5. <clears throat> okay, let me explain that. Here I am using arbitrary union. Arbitrary means it is any union. That means, and that union may be the finite union or infinite union. Infinite union you may have both countable and uncountable. That's the meaning of arbitrary. It can be anything. I am saying that if you start with a metric space, I said this proof is very immediate. Just use the definition. Then if take in a family of open sets. I, this big I is an index set. That is for each small i in big I, you are getting an open set. The family of open sets. Look, this i can be finite, can be infinite. If it is infinite, it can be both uncountable and countable. I am saying if you have this, then this, this union is also open. Arbitrary union, basically any union. There is no restriction on the index. Set. Basically, it means there is no restriction on the index. Set. Okay, right. 
even if it is if it is five, look, it is five. Nothing is there in the union. It will be five. Okay, that is open. So that this I am leaving it to you. That okay. The proof of B be left as exercise. A already X and the phi are open. Okay. <coughs> here I am proving C. Look, but the thing is that what about here the interunion? What about intersection? Here any yeah, intersection. Uh -huh. This suppose each U Y is open, then need not be open. Before proving this, okay, let me give an example. That look, it's opposite. We're taking substitute union by intersection, arbitrary. This need not be true. Now look at the example. This look here in R. This take. Un equal to this. You can first of all you should approve that exercise. Every open ball is open here. Exercise. Let X D be a metric space. In every open ball in XT is an open set. Next, any open ball, but that you should prove it. Okay. Is open. Idea is very look. Why you have what to do? I am coming to this example. But you have a ball, your open ball. Okay. Right. So this is your center, BXR. You'll have to show any point here is an integer point. That means if you have taken a point here, then you'll have to choose a radius such a way that is entirely inside this. Okay. Now suppose that means suppose this is point is Y. Now what this is why. Now what we'll choose. Look, you'll have to look at DXY. Look, I can choose Y not equal to X because for X already I have this BXR is inside. Okay. So choose Y not equal to X. I don't need any that. But why then look first of all what should be that? The whole distance is R. And this is d minus x y, so r t this. Look at I last time I told you that. Try to have your tricks calculations on the laptop like that. This is a plane, so basically r square I'm doing. So r minus d x y. Okay, even d x y is zero doesn't matter. It is because d x y. Look here, y belongs to b x y implies dxy is less than r so this is positive okay right but look at r minus dxy r minus dxy means basically this part this is why this part so that if you choose all what i look to take radius which will be less than this that means choose got it then you can easily check b now you have to check b y T is contained in P X R. Look, what trick I did. Got got the point. Let me tell you this. This, this, why? We are adding. This is D X Y. Okay, and whole thing is R. Okay, whole thing is R. This thing is R. Okay, so this part which is left, this part, this is R minus dxy. So if I choose a number smaller than this, that will be contained in inside. That is the trick I did. Okay, so that should work. Okay, right. 
So that is the proof. Basically, I have given you the proof. Okay. But I told you, this is the small tricks. First, you'll have to learn. If you want need to, let me tell you that. If you want to handle metric space cleverly, competently, confidently, you need to know how to work with the open balls. This is the basic thing. If you can handle an open ball, forget about it. You will never be able to handle the metric space. So handling open ball is very important. You'll have to know how to handle, how to play with open balls, how to play with open balls. How to play with open balls. So that, okay, fine. Now coming back to the point here. Now look, if I take this, you were intersection. Since each of them is an open interval, is an open. Each of you when is open, in R T R this standard usual metric. Then N belongs to N. It will give you what? Only the point zero. Zero is everybody in every event. So zero will be the intersection. But only zero can be here. Okay. Because if you choose a point other than zero, you can always just choose an interval which won't be here. So this is, but this is not open. By open in an interval will be contained in tell. If G is open, that means it has to be interior point. That means an interval centered at zero will have to be contained in this. That is not possible. So this is not true. Now that means even the, I have taken small set countably infinite. I, I could take uncountable. Now look, if I take this U epsilon, take any epsilon greater than zero. Okay. Then also look, each U epsilon, epsilon greater than zero, any non-negative, that will be also. So this is again not open. So countable infinite, here it is uncountable family. So that means, for infinite, forget it. It won't be true. That means only choice whether it is true for finite. Okay. Now look here. That means the result is that if you have finite family of open sets. Finite family, up to only finite family. A finite family of open sets. in extreme then this is true i want to n is so well now look what is the proof i'm doing it look at the proof technique don't mug up the proof rather try to understand the tree look here i have taken a point each point i'll have to show this is an interior point Look what I have done. So that means this implies X belongs to E Y for each I, where I lying in between this. Now each U I is open. That means each point in U I is interior point. So implies there exist. It will depend on E Y also now. There exists R I greater than zero such that you have this. Okay, because each e, e, this x is an interior point u i. I am taking in order to because my set is u i, so I am taking this. Okay, now look r i each r i greater than zero. Now I am taking r is minimum of this. Now look, since this is only finitely many r i, r is strictly greater than zero. Look, in the radius of the open ball, it has to be strictly greater than zero. Zero radius is not there, is not allowed. Look, and this is guaranteed by this minimum of the finite. In fact, R will be one of the R i's, right? 
R will be one of the RIs. This is greater than zero. Now we can prove that. Look, this is very easy. B X R. Last time I told you this is smaller than R I. This is true for all I. That means. Yes, that I proved. X is an look here. X I have taken. Come here. I have produced a ball, open ball, centered at X, which is entirely contained in this. So it is an interior point. So this is open. Okay. Look here. This will face many times. This makes a big difference while proving it again. Z. If if we take infinite family, then what will be a choice? Then you said I will take infimum, right? Suppose you have. An arbitrary family. Yes. But the thing is that even if it's all R I strictly greater than zero, this may be zero. This is possibility is there that this may be zero. Look at the example. In one by n, each one by n is strictly positive. But when you take infimum, this is zero. Right. So that. In case of infinite family, if we would replace minimum, try to replace minimum by infimum, so there is no guarantee that it won't be zero. That exactly happens. That the case example I was giving you, if you replaced minimum by infimum, that was coming zero. Okay, like here. There, look. First, I have taken this. Exactly. So that here it means. Here the r is also one by n, so this is coming zero. And other one we are taking this. Then in it was not coming this, so the, because of this problem. So this makes a big thing. Here you see the difference between minimum and infimum. Okay, though it is a generalization of this, but how it makes a big difference? Infimum may not work, and that will reflect on your result itself. Okay, right? So I have given the counter example. So make sure what I am saying. This result, what I am proving, prove only finite for if into when you are taking intersection, only it is true for finite family. Okay, I have given counter example that I already discussed. Okay, so I think I will do that later on. Okay, page 65. Last year semester started very late on that, so that don't go by that. In the lecture of October October 20, 2020, don't go by that. Okay, so that be careful. That I am going to finish the lecture, but I am telling you this thing. Make sure that page 64, 63, you read very carefully. Read very carefully, particularly theorem 6.5, part C. You read this result. Read it. Read the statement. Understand its proof. This is very important. Okay, and then the whole comment, page sixty-four. Read page sixty-four. Let me tell you that even the brightest people in that, if you just read one time, you may not understand everything. Okay, you may not understand everything. Okay, if particularly if starting with something new. Okay, like in the dark, if you. Walking on a street, you may not know what is there, but gradually, if you keep walking, then try to you have a better feeling of the road. It is like that. If you read once, let me tell you. If you read the first time reading, if you understood 50 percent, I'm telling you that means you have understood well. That is, it's good. Then you read second time, it will increase. Probably after third or fourth reading, you will understand everything. So that third or fourth reading depends. 
so that if you under want to understand something you need to read at carefully at least three four times only then you will understand okay so that in the first reading if you understand broadly you say the broadly that is 50% in the first reading you should understand the broadly what is being told to you what is being mentioned to you what is being informed that is broadly you try to understand then you go into the second reading third reading go into the details to find out what is the meaning of this what is the meaning of this okay look here I let me tell you i like you i was also student another younger friend of mine once asked me that while the teacher wrote on the board did you understand everything <laughs> i just laughed i said if you understand try to understand everything then you won't be able to have your notes also so that you need to have an optimization between what you understand there and what you write on your in your notes so that whatever teacher is saying if you understand 50% it's fine 75% is excellent but then when you go back to read the notes okay look at the what teacher was saying okay and if you do not understand something you try to understand otherwise ask the ta or the ask the teacher so that don't expect that whatever i, I mean i also don't expect whatever i am telling you understand everything and so that be careful that to understand everything you have to read yourself you read also on your own after the class whenever you find time best thing will be that if you read the same day because if you do it after two three days by that time you will you are likely to forget many things so i will suggest that whatever i am teaching you when very fine time in the same day have a look what has been taught particularly that i have recorded so that you know have the record so tomorrow i will meet you theek hai okay yes, tomorrow i will have class fine okay sir oh, sir bye sir ha batao uh, sir you told us to uh, about minor exam date so can we have minor exam of real analysis on 28 september 28 September. Sir, because there are some students who are having their undergrad final exam. When? Sir, uh, between uh, 20, 21, and there are also some seniors who in the same course. They are also. Oh, uh, they 27 have all. Twenty-seven. What problem is? Yes, sir. Twenty-seven. What problem is? Sir, twenty-seven is. Twenty-seven is Monday. Twenty-eight is Tuesday. Yes, sir. तो so 27 में क्या प्रॉब्लम है सर 27 भी फ्री है आई थिंक इट इज बेटर टू हैव 27 बिकॉज़ देन इफ आई डू इट 28 27 यू वांट टू डू द क्लास समझ गया ना यस सर सो बेटर टू इट 27 एंड यू वांट टू हैव द सेम टाइम और अनदर टाइम यू शुड टेल मी दैट सो यू यू बेटर हैव 27 नो यस सर And you can tell me the time. It will should be one hour plus fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes for this thing. Submitting and that. Hello so sir. Ha? Huh? Hello sir. Sir, I have exam on twenty six uh, in evening. So twenty six evening for a uh, which exam? Exam. Ha? Huh? Say again. क्लासेस So, बताओ 28 is 29 is fine. So we have another minor on 29. <laughs> तुम लोगों ने बहुत मेहनत से पोस्टपोन किया क्या? हाँ. Sir, actually, sir, actually. In the time 1923, how many minors you are taking? You are not taking any minors, है? <laughs> so, sir, sir, actually, seniors के भी कुछ common course का paper है. प्लस सर हमारे बैचमेट्स के अंडर ग्रेजुएशन का भी पेपर है तो सर बहुत ज्यादा मेस हो गया है अंडर ग्रेजुएट कहां फाइनल अभी तक हुआ नहीं 
सर कुछ यूनिवर्सिटीज का नहीं हुआ है अभी तो व्हाट अबाउट 30th सितंबर सर ओके सर हां सर 30 विल आल्सो फाइन ओके इफ यू वांट ऑन 28 फाइन देन 27 ठीक है आई वोट टेक द क्लास देन आई बट दूस टू टू लेक्चर आई विल मिस देन यू लैव टू कॉम्पेंसेट मी लेटर समझ गया ठीक है ट्वेंटी एट ही क्लास रख दो एग्जाम रख दो बट ट्वेंटी एट बताओ टाइम तुम बता बताना है तुमको ठीक है यू कैन सेंड मी एन ई मेल यू कैन सेंड मी टू टेल मी टूमोरो वॉट विल बी द टाइम ठीक है ठीक है वो ट्वेंटी एट में ही एग्जाम करो ओके ट्वेंटी सेवन देर विल बी नो क्लास ठीक है ओके सर सर थैंक यू ओके बाय कितने कितने मार्क्स का एग्जाम एग्जाम होगा होगा इन द यू 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 आर बिफोर द एग्जाम दैट विल बी द सिलेबस बट आई विल टेल यू सिंस आई विल बी मीटिंग यू द लास्ट टाइम व्हेन सितंबर व्हाट यस सर बिफोर द एग्जाम व्हेन आई विल मीट यू द लास्ट टाइम 17 सितंबर 18 सितंबर दैट डे यू आस्क मी आई विल गिव यू द सिलेबस ठीक है सर फुल मार्क्स फुल मार्क्स विल बी 40 दैट आई टोल्ड यू 40 ओके सर एंड एक्चुअली सिलेबस राइट नाउ टू शुड बी मिनिमम अप टू द डेट 17 सितंबर 17 सितंबर व्हाटएवर आई टीच समझ गया यस yes, सर 17 सितंबर एंड 40 मार्क्स एंड दैट विल बी ऑन 28 27 आई वांट टेक क्लास ठीक है यस सर ओके थैंक यू सर ओके यस सर